Welcome, I'm Nicholas and this is the first episode of Save the Web. In this series, we'll take a look at the current state of the internet and the transformative time it is in now. After 20 years of what we loosely defined as Web 2.0, the cracks are starting to show and the status quo is being challenged by technologies like AI, blockchain, AR and VR and crypto. To quote Sam Cooke, a change is gonna come. And in this series, we'll take a deep dive into everything that's driving that change. So let's start off with the beginning, literally maybe. The internet's original sin, the fat cat that bankrolled Web 2.0, the elephant that's always in the chat room. I'm talking about online advertising, of course. Nothing has shaped the web more than online advertising. As its primary business model, it has dictated how consumers interact with the web for the last decade or more. And some of the most profitable companies today wouldn't have existed without online advertising. Just try to imagine companies like Google or Meta without it. And while the online ad industry has been one of the biggest catalysts of growth, it hasn't done that without a cost. Privacy, online antitrust, uh, the emergence of big tech monopolies that shamelessly try to monetize our entire lives are just a few examples of that. But today I like to talk about something more insidious. Incentives. Now, let me explain it with an analogy. Think about all those horrible people you see on cable TV reality shows. Now, why do people act in such a way? Those table-flipping, confrontational real housewives are not an accurate reflection of society, I would think. Yet, they act that way because they get rewarded for bad behavior. Drama sells. So they are incentivized to act overly confrontational. Now let's circle back to the web. That same mechanism has supercharged the social dynamic of the web. The ad-driven attention economy has created all the wrong incentives. Social networks have become havens for misinformation, fake news, conspiracy theories, and just like reality TV, confrontational people acting horrible towards each other. Companies like Meta trade in anger and polarization because that is what drives their ad revenue. And too many of us have accepted that because we believe that these platforms are just a reflection of how society behaves. Yet we don't think about the incentives that drive that behavior. And it doesn't have to be like that. You just have to compare Facebook with LinkedIn. On LinkedIn, the quality of content is generally way higher and people tend to be more helpful and supportive towards each other. So why is that? Well, LinkedIn's uh, advertising features only account for about 20% of its revenue. Most of the revenue for LinkedIn comes from talent solutions and subscriptions. They don't have to boost outrageous posts to meet their quarterly targets and users get rewarded for posting quality content. It's ad-driven versus subscription. And with ads, you get trash. With subscriptions, you get quality. It's true for almost any sector or business. And interestingly, Meta has recently announced subscriptions for Facebook and Instagram, primarily because the online ad market is totally saturated. And when a challenger like TikTok comes along, it eats away at the revenue. But they also must realize that the ad model is under a lot of pressure and have to diversify their revenue streams to grow the company. So is subscription the holy grail that can fix everything? No, certainly not. While it might work for some companies like LinkedIn, it won't work for all. And there are other problems with subscription as well. The biggest one is that not everybody has the financial means and it might lead to a class-based divide on the internet. So how can we create the right kind of incentives while maintaining accessibility for all? Well, this is where the promise of Web3 enters the discussion. And while there are many different definitions floating around of Web3, it usually comes down to this. A next generation of the web that is decentralized, open, interoperable, user-owned and powered by crypto and blockchain. It is usually defined by its decentralized and permissionless nature, but if you look a bit deeper, the way it incentivizes desired behavior on the network is totally different. If you think about it, the way protocols like Bitcoin and Ethereum have successfully grown their networks and popularity without a central controlling entity is pretty remarkable. All the stuff that's being built on Ethereum today, from DeFi to DApps to NFTs to totally new forms of online identity, is comparable with the mobile app revolution that was kickstarted by the iOS platform. It will change the internet in ways we can't fully imagine today. 
So how is this all possible in a totally decentralized and open way? Well, that's because with crypto and by extension in Web3, incentives are built into the protocol. They create a value layer on top of the internet that's never existed before. And with value, you can create friction where necessary to discourage bad behavior and incentives to reward good behavior. And there are already some early examples of companies applying those Web3 principles. Take Reddit with its community token reward program or Brave Browser, including the user in the value exchange between publisher and advertising with its basic attention token. Of course, these aren't fully realized visions of Web3 yet, but there are baby steps into the right direction. And this is where the series will take us. A look well ahead of what is and what's coming. We'll do a deep dive into multiple aspects of Web3 and how it will disrupt social media, online identity, digital marketing, and so on. So if you're interested in continuing this journey with me, please subscribe to get notified for the next episode.